Hello, old school movie reviews. Welcome to the apocalypse. All right, today I have Black Belt Jones, uh, starring Jim Kelly. This is from uh, 1974. It's directed by Robert Klaus. It starred Jim Kelly and Gloria Hendry and Malik Carter. Also featured uh, character actors such as Scatman Crothers. Eric Lanaville and Alan Weeks. Um, I had heard about this movie. I was aware about this of this movie for like a long time, but um, you know, it was a while before I actually uh, got around to actually watching it like all the way through. And the thing is, in my mind, I don't know, maybe I just built it up or whatever, but it really wasn't as good as I expected to be um, as a film. On the other hand, is it entertaining? Well. Kind of, sort of. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's start here. Basically, uh, the plot concerns uh, Black Belt Jones, who's sort of a freelance government agent. He turns down an assignment to infiltrate the mob or something, but then he hears that his old mentor, Pops, is in trouble. Uh, Jones returns to the old neighborhood, and what it is, Pops runs this karate school in the neighborhood, and he's being pressured to leave by this drug dealer named Pinky. Uh, the drug dealer works for the mob, who wants the valuable real estate that Pop's school is on. So Pops is killed, and then his long-lost daughter, Sydney, returns, um, you know, trying to find out what happened to uh, Pop. Sydney's also a martial arts fighter, and she ends up joining force with Black Belt Jones to, uh, you know, fight both Pinky and the mob. And, you know, you know, there's fights, there's kung fu, people get thrown through glass all the time, crazy stuff happens, and, you know, it's, it's, that's the way it goes. Um, basically, the big problem here is, um, well, the script just really isn't good, you know. In some places, the dialogue is just so bad, it, it borders on the surreal, you know. An early scene that comes to mind happens between Jones and an FBI man, and you know, they're talking about stuff, and I'm like, you know, you know what? You know? Hey, man, you should be a comedy writer. If only, but can it be done? Just weird stuff that's just like whatever you know um kelly's acting jim kelly's acting is just this side of adequate you know and that just really increases like the odd feeling of a couple of scenes um the movie has also lots of illogical occurrences uh that happen in a few places and in the plot certain things happen just for the sake of having something interesting happen whether it fits or not I'm thinking of like there are plot holes where it's like, wait a minute, if these guys knew that this guy was over here, why didn't they just go there first as opposed to going over there and having, you know, some stuff happen? Uh, you know, another point, Black Belt Jones needs help with a task and he goes to get these people, but why doesn't he get those other people that will probably be just as at you know um capable or whatever you know and it's just you know you just figure well these people are just a little bit more sexy you know you know whatever um the fight scenes some of the fight scenes are problematic you know this is one of those old movies where you know the hero punches somebody and they just fall down you know um a lot of times you know you're looking at it and you're like you know Dude, Jim hit you once in the chest. Why are you unconscious? Get up. And, you know, you're thinking, why are you giving him time to just, like, he's just flexing and posing. Swing on him. You know what I mean? It's, you know, the whole thing of Jim Kelly's always fighting at least a dozen thugs. And it's like, you know, they give him, like, you know, they take him on one-on-one -on -one or whatever. It's like, there's ten of you so-and-so's. Just rush him, you know what I mean? That type of thing. Um, what else? Uh, there's also, just looking at it from a 21st century point of view, there's also a few things that are kind of like politically incorrect, you know? Um, and and I, I really don't think it was like the intention of the filmmakers to be offensive or anything like that. But like I said, looking at it from a modern day perspective, a few things that, you know, probably wouldn't fly in a mainstream movie. 
Uh, there's a few uses of the N-word. There's some kind of stereotypical behavior, but you could say, well, that's balanced off by, you know, some of the other characters that are more, you know, positive role model type characters. Uh, the mob guys are complete Italian stereotypes. You know, there's one scene of all the mob guys. They're all fat guys sitting around a table eating spaghetti, you know. There's a couple of times where, you know, mob guys literally say, Mamma Mia! You know, I'm like, wow, you know, gee whiz, you know. Um, there's a couple of times, there's no actual gay people or gay characters, I should say, in the film. But there are a couple of times where people use the F word that's, you know, a, slave, uh, a slur for gays in the film. So, you know, knowing that going, I mean... You know, you could say, well, it was the 70s and so on and so forth. But, you know, just just know that when you're going in. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, now, what's good about the movie is uh, mostly what's good about the movie. It's mostly just Jim Kelly. And I don't mean his acting, but just Jim Kelly being Jim Kelly. You know, his acting's really not that great, but he does have a certain amount of, like, screen presence. And he has charisma that comes through, even though... Uh, you know, he's giving these kind of mediocre readings of like some terrible lines, you know. Uh, Jim looks real cool throughout, you know. There's not one frame of this film where Jim doesn't look cool, you know. He's just like, it's the, it's, you know, a definition of awesomeness, you know. He looks cool fighting, he looks cool talking on the phone, he looks cool just standing around, he looks cool when he's just being thoughtful. Um, so it's real easy to see why Jim uh, was, you know, kind of became a star like around this time. You know, he kind of had this sort of like easygoing masculinity that kind of, you know, empowered people, especially young men. Um, you know, was something you could kind of copy and model yourself on in a way, in a positive way. He was also, you know, good looking enough and gave off kind of like a humble yet, you know, you know, sensual vibe, you know, that would attract women. So, you know, Jim was the man in this movie. Jim really stood out and he, he, he carried the movie and he made the movie work, you know, for what it was, you know. Um, so lots of decent uh, character actors in a film. I would say this, Malik Carter as Pinky, the uh, drug dealer who's working for the mob, um, he was probably like the best actor in this movie, or he was, you know, he was the best person in the film. He, he almost runs away with it. Um, you know, he's able to take his part and really transcend a lot of like really mediocre material that was written on the page. You actually do buy his character. You uh, do, you know, believe him as who he's supposed to be. And, you know, he makes it work. He really sells it on screen. Um, let's see here. Some of the other actors are Gloria Hendry as Sydney. Uh, Scatman Crothers is in it as Pops. Uh, Eric Lenavue as a, a young guy named Quincy. He's somebody you might recognize. I remember him like popping out on like various TV roles and things like that during the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, Andre Felipe as Don, uh, another great character actor. Uh, I mentioned Malik Carter. Uh, Alan Weeks as Toppy is okay. Um, who else? Uh, I think, and I probably should have looked it up again to be certain, but I want to say Marla Gibbs is in this movie for like, you know, two minutes as like a barmaid or something like that. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, actually the character actors do pretty well. Um, they do pretty well with, you know, what they were given. Um, like I said, it was directed by Robert Klaus. Robert Klaus was a, oh, he also directed, um, uh, Enter the Dragon, which also, like, kind of co-starred uh, uh, Jim Kelly. And um, what else? What else do I want to say about this movie? Oh, well, I, another reason I think it might have been kind of popular or another positive thing to say about the movie is it also kind of has a light-hearted tone that was a little bit different than some of the some of the other ex black exploitation movies at the at the time. It's, you know, it's basically a fun action movie, you know. It's lots of things in a film that are funny or sort of, or they're supposed or supposed to be funny, you know. Some of the humor in there is unintentional, but you know, whatever. Uh, you know, the movie's attitude or, or or tone, you know, it's not oppressively grim. You know, yeah, there's crime in a film, but the black people in the movie aren't portrayed as inherent victims because of their blackness, you know. Uh, the attitude of the film is not Oh, you know, we're so tragic living in the ghetto, you know. Uh, it's 
basically Black Belt Jones shows characters being successful and confident and powerful and heroic as well as some of the other kind of like kind of buffoonish type characters but you know there's like I said a positive side as well um you know it's basically a generally upbeat movie you know and I can easily see how this movie might have had you know appeal as you know just a Saturday night uh, date film um I guess that's it that's all I can think of right now I would say you know would I recommend this movie I kind of would if you know you maybe have an affinity for like certain types of B movies and things like that like I said it's not a great film but it can be enjoyable if you you know take it for what it is and kind of get into the kind of the more campy elements of it or whatever you might be able to have fun with it okay and I guess that's it once again I gotta thank you very much leave whatever comment you want uh, thanks and you all have a great day <laughs>